full of darkness than redness than whiteness. Hey, good evening, race fans. Welcome to Reeky Raceway, the place where the chase drivers need to be afraid. No, literally. I mean, if you watch the Division 1 race, oh man. Highest finishing championship contender was 18th, and that was Adam Chambers. Here tonight, we got more championship contenders here in this Division 2 race, and we're going to see what the deal is here. Will any championship contenders be able to tame this racetrack, maybe pick up a win to help them get five more bonus points towards the championship standings? We also saw the Acostas have a bit of a streak going on. John Acosta won the Division 3 race at Arizona in the Snickers Cup Series last week. Then it was Ryan Acosta last night winning the Division 1 Truck Series race. We got John Acosta and Taylor Acosta both in this Division 2 race of the Truck Series. Can either one of them keep the Acosta streak alive? That'll be interesting to find out as well. Well, Sean Galligan's got the right idea, pole sitter for this race, and he is a championship contender after pulling off his second win of the season last week at Arizona. That ended up getting him into the chase via the second wild card spot. We'll see how he does tonight alongside Jacob Boyer. Then it's Jake Baskinger and Dylan Young making up row two. We got that win factor that we see there with the flags waving. So will that play out into this race? You never know. How will these championship contenders fare? We got Sean Galligan in here, Anthony McCurry, Joseph Bryant, and don't forget defending champ Jake Rogers in this field, as well as here's the starting lineup for tonight's race. to win his third race of the season which is a feat that hasn't been done since Michael Harvey did it in season one in the truck series we'll have to see if Sean Galligan can maybe do it here tonight all right so Galligan Boyer Let's see where some of our other championship contenders are going to be starting. Looks like uh, Joseph Bryant, Anthony Curry, they're going to start off in row 6. So they'll start in 11th and 12th. I see Matthew Rodriguez back there. I think he's going to start in 18th. And then I saw Daniel Schwab quite a ways back there. I think he's starting near the back of the pack. Same for Jake Rogers. The defending champ. So yeah, there's, there's quite a few drivers not starting so close up to the front. Green flag is out. Here we go. Who will be able to tame this racetrack? Will it be a championship contender? As we see a driver making the move already, that's Anthony McCurry. He moved right down to the inside line. Good choice there. That inside line seems to be the way around this racetrack. As they are side by side for second, Sean Galligan enjoying the view, but not for long. The view is going to come right up on the left side of him. Jake Baskinger to the inside. Baskinger going to be battling it out for the Mobile One Cup Series Championship after he tied up for 10th place after the Arizona race. So, Baskinger trying to get a little bit of experience here, it would seem. As now Tim Feigl comes to the inside line. Tim Feigl, who came away with a really good finish last week in his Mobile One Cup Series race in Arizona after he came down pit road before the green flag even came out. That was a big story right there. And Feigl looking for his first win in the Truck Series as he's got now a battle with Zach Buchanan. If anybody's had real hard looks, Ben Zach Buchanan. He just cannot buy a break no matter what series he's in. And here comes James McLeod, one of those drivers like T.O. Bain in Division 1 who just barely missed making the chase for the Oreo Truck Series Championship. He's got some championship contenders behind him, though, in the form of Anthony McCurry and Joseph Bryant. McLeod to the inside. Jason McLeod still looking for his first win of his NNSCRA career. See if he can do it here tonight. As Anthony McCurry, Joseph Bryant, we see quite a few championship contenders up here at the front doing very well, but I'm seeing a few others kind of slipping back here. Whoa, Jeffy Ellers was down on the inside line there on the apron. 
There's the uh, Daniel Schwab machine. Not a good run for him right now as he slipped back all the way in the back of the pack. Certainly needs to step it up if he's going to be battling it out for a championship. He may be biding his time, but quite honestly, if I wanted to be somewhere, I want to be up front. You get caught up in a wreck here, your day is done, and there's not a whole lot of room to be able to move, maneuver around here. Look at the defending champ, Jake Rogers. He's not having a good day right now. Currently in the 34th position is where we find the number 91. Trying to become the first two-time winner in the NSERA. And he'd be the first back-to-back -back winner as well if he could pull off yet another Truck Series Championship win. There's another driver not doing quite so well at the start of this event, Matthew Rodriguez. I think he was basically caught on the high side. Now he's gotten back down to the inside, and we'll see if he can maneuver his way through the field and get up to the front. Matthew Rodriguez just missed out on being a driver to battle it out for all three championships as he ended up missing the Snickers Cup Series Championship chase. Both he and Sean Galgan actually were in the hunt for that, but they both um, did not make it. So we have no driver make trying to battle it out for all three championships. As it looks like, I see another championship contender up there that is kind of falling back, and that's the pole sitter, Sean Galligan. Where is he? Oops, I think I missed him. There he is. Whoops, I just had him. There he is. He's on the high side now getting bypassed by Rhett Yates. Yeah, he, Jake Baskinger, Tim Feigl, Zach Buchanan. All these drivers we saw up at the front, they're losing ground now. And some drivers that are not losing ground are Corey Williams, Ben Ward, Bill Doberpool. So they go to the inside line now. Connor Germain there as well. Dylan Schwallenberg is in that mix. And there's Aaron Reed on that inside line as well. A driver who got knocked out of running in the chase for the championship. When he had two wins this season, it was because Sean Galligan had two wins and was higher in the standings than Aaron Reed. So Aaron Reed still trying to win races, but not able to battle for a championship. Here's Dylan Schwallenberg looking for his second win of the season in the truck series. So he'll go to the inside of Connor Germain. And they're starting now to get three wide. They were double wide for most of this event up until about lap six, and now they're splitting three wide, which uh, means they're starting to get racy now. Bob Fergus to the inside now in a three wide battle. He's got Aaron Reed pushing him. This is kind of like a restrictor plate track, not as much in the fact that uh, you need to be pushed by someone, but you do kind of need a drafting partner, and it brings the high speeds and high bankings that we see to restrictor plate track. Aaron Reed looking for truck series race win number three of this season. As he's down to the inside line, but Nick Bergen, he's looking for his second win of the season in the trucks. As he's to the inside, Jake Croven also looking for his second win of the season in the trucks. And how about Rhett Yates? We already know quite a bit about Rhett Yates. He's got a pretty good resume in both the NSRA and the PORWC, but we're going to see if maybe he can pull off his first win tonight. Oh, Nick Bergen hit the wall, and it's a huge pile up. What in the world? Oh, my. Jake Crovens in it. Dylan Young, Jake Baskinger, and championship contender Sean Galligan. Championship contender Jake Rogers. They're both in it. Tim Walsh, Jessica Miller. What was going on there with the 48? That was one of the most precarious things I've ever seen in my life. Aaron Reed's the leader, but nobody even clipped the 48, and he went up into the wall. What was with that? He spun out in front of the entire field. I'm scratching my head in disbelief here. This, this is incredible. What was Nick Bergen thinking? He was leading for Pete's sakes. Aaron Reed's the leader, Bill Doberpool second, Rhett Yates, Leah Walker, and now championship contender Matthew Rodriguez is fifth, but... Let's see what happened. That was one of the strangest things I've ever seen. Well, will somebody please pick up the phone and call Mythbusters or Ghostbusters or someone who can tell me just exactly what happened here? Watch this. Nobody, nobody on the back bumper of the 48. And he doesn't even make contact with anyone. Watch this. Aaron Reed, he's not even making contact with the 48. The 48 car just kind of... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yes, he did have contact with Aaron Reed. Okay, I thought he just went up the racetrack, but 
He then spins down to Jake Crovin. So it was Aaron Reed. But actually, Nick Bergen kind of squeezed Reed up into the wall. Ben Ward, heavy damage to his car. Jake Baskinger, James McLeod, Savannah Turner, Richard Johnson. Let's look back here. There's Caleb Barnes. Is that Adam Rose or is that uh, Daniel Schwab? It's Schwab. That's Daniel Schwab. That's another championship contender. And there's Croven up onto the hood of Jake Rogers, another championship contender there. They're back there behind Baskinger's Planters Chevy, or Dodge rather. You can see uh, Sean Galligan trying to get through. Tim Walsh, Danny Wells, Jessica Miller, Dylan Young, Bob Fergus, Tim Walsh. I don't think they really got much damage. They just kind of got held up back there and were waiting to be able to get by. Actually, I think Danny Wells got caught on the apron there in the 51. We'll have to look at that, but drivers have sustained the most damage out of that. I think could have been Leo Walker, who's up in fourth now, Jake Croven, and Ben Ward. Let's go back to Green Flag Racing and settle it all out. Well, here's what we got. Drivers out after this incident are Ben Ward, Jake Croven, and Jacob Boyer. So his damage was too much for him to be able to continue as well. Danny Wells was indeed caught on the apron, and so he has fallen a lap down to the leaders. But it's a single file restart because there's less than 10 laps to go. So Danny Wells will not be able to go up to the inside line and try and get back on the tail end of the lead lap. Let's go through the running order here. Brought to you by Nerf Codename Ghost YouTube channel. Nerf Codename Ghost for all your NPCRA, Ace Combat, and Game Walkthrough needs. Nerf Codename Ghost has it. Link to his channel is in the description if you wish to subscribe. Aaron Reed, he's the leader looking for Truck Series Race win number three. We talked at the top of the program about Sean Galligan trying to do that as well. No driver's done it since Season 1 when Michael Harvey won three races in the Truck Series. Bill Doberpool will restart in second. Rhett Yates, I don't think we've heard the last of him. He's going to be third. Fourth, Leah Walker and Chase contender Matthew Rodriguez, highest running one there. He's up in fifth place. He actually comes in in the 12th position in points, last car in the chase. Margaret Mason will restart in sixth. Seventh is Jacob Rodriguez. Eighth, Zach Buchanan. Ninth, Adam Rose. And Nick Bergen will restart in 10th. Mackenzie Hopkins, 11th. Brendan Patterson, 12th. Dylan Schmallenberg in 13th. 14th will be James McLeod and 15th, Michael Harvey. you got to go back here to 17th to find Chase contender Joseph Bryant. Anthony McCurry will restart in 21st. Daniel Schwab in 24th. And then a long ways back here to Jake Rogers in 32nd. And Sean Galligan in 37th. Well, the deal with the uh, Acostas being able to continue on their streak. It doesn't look like any of them are really close to the front yet to be able to continue it on. John Acosta currently running back in 28th place. Taylor Acosta just up ahead, not doing much better in 25th. So there is the possibility that the Acosta streak could end here tonight at just two wins in a row. Bill Doberpool to the inside, though. He's still looking for his first win of the season in the truck series as he takes the lead margaret mason now to the inside side by side for the lead the napa toyota tundra is going to take the top spot here comes zach buchanan here comes jacob rodriguez and how about mackenzie hopkins she's dead last in the standings having a good run here today a well-needed run for that 64 car you know i could think back to the days when that 64 car just had horrible luck can't remember if it was season two or season one, but Alex Band drove that truck, I remember, one season. Really just could not catch a break. Seemed like every time the caution came out, the 64 car was in one way or another involved in it. And it seems like the same case is happening here in season three. But that could maybe be turned around if she could win today. Here comes Rhett Yates directly behind, though. Matthew Rodriguez. Could he be the first championship contender to pick up a win here in the chase? Side by side for the lead. Jacob Rodriguez. Mackenzie Hopkins. Rodriguez, a former winner of the season. He won back at Michigan in the truck series. And now Mackenzie Hopkins is going to take the lead. Whoa, look out. That Bill Dobro car in the middle there looked awfully squirrely there through turns one and two, but keeps it straight, continues on, and it's now side by side still for the lead. Maybe not for long. Rhett Yates getting a big run down the back straightaway, but it's not going to be enough to be able to get to the inside. He's left to battle for second place there with Bill Overpool and Zach Buchanan, who's rim riding. Mackenzie Hopkins now will clear Jacob Rodriguez and will take the top spot. Whoa! Doverpool gets turned! Big wreck there! Big wreck! Doverpool got spun out and Mackenzie Hopkins leads us. The caution is out! Who else was in that? Whoa! Look out! Oh, they're backed up! Looks like they're okay. Oh, man. Whoa! Whoa! Taylor Costa spun out under the infield. 
Heavy duty damage to that 54 car. The Acosta streak will not continue. Whoa, Sean Gallagher gets spun by Bob Fergus. What's the deal there? Oh, no, Rhett Yates. Oh, man. Rhett Yates involved and... Whoa, there's another wreck back there. Whoa, that was under caution. Dude, what the heck? Nick Bergen getting spun out. Oh, my. Okay, guys, look, the caution's out. You can slow down now, anytime. Good grief. There's Taylor Acosta. Her car badly damaged and smoking. Sean Galligan gets, saw got spun out under the caution flag, and same deal for... Where is he? That car right there, Nick Bergen. And Rhett Yates, oh man, he, he was en route to maybe winning this thing. I think it was only his second start in the trucks, and he's involved here. Let's see what happened to the 56. Well, quite honestly, Rep Yates was one of my picks to go to victory lane here. He seemed to be in the right place at the right time, and right here just seems like he's in the wrong place at the wrong time. I think the contact's going to start here between either Jacob Rodriguez and Bill Doberpool or Bill Doberpool and Margaret Mason. Oh, it was Bill Doberpool. He got into Jacob Rodriguez coming off this turn. And they turned down straight into Rhett Yates. Nowhere for Yates to go. His car is going to spin around. Same for Bill Doberpool. And here's where the big contact comes. Watch right here. Rhett Yates and Bill Doberpool, they make an incredible save. But then they're going through the grass four wide. I don't think the caution had come out for any reason at that point because they were able to continue on. Look at Doberpool. He forces his way into the field there, bouncing off of Corey Williams. But when Rhett Yates tries to come up, he can't do it. And he ends up involving Taylor Acosta, Bill Doberpool. Oh, Joseph Bryant got a piece of it. James McLeod as well. Brandon Gonzalez got a piece of it. Brendan Patterson was involved. Oh, my. That was... Not a lot of damage for Joseph Bryant, but that's another championship contender right there. And there you see Rhett Yates hard hit. Taylor Acosta went down and, oh, I think she actually, let me see here. Where's Taylor? Ah, I'm just going to, instead of scrolling through, I'm going to put it right on the car. I think she got the inside wall too. Oh, yeah, watch this. Watch this. Right there, she gets clipped in the left rear by Bill Doberpool. Sends her straight down the racetrack. And watch this impact into the inside retaining wall right there. Oh, man. Thank goodness that was a safer barrier, not that concrete wall there with the yellow and black stripes. That could have been even worse, but... Boy, Taylor Acosta and Rhett Yates, two drivers who filled in those rides here last week to finish off the season. Both involved here, heavy-duty contact to both those cars, and this may end this race under caution. We'll have to see. Well, folks, you ever heard the scripture, the last shall be first and the first shall be last? Well, take a look at this. Mackenzie Hopkins comes into this race dead last, 82nd in the standings. And tonight, she's going to pick up her first Truck Series victory of the season. Who says that you have to be a front runner to win the race? Mackenzie Hopkins is going to be a winner here in the Truck Series with being the last car in the point standings. How about that kind of a turn of event? Margaret Mason will get third. Highest championship contender. First time we got a championship contender in the Truck Series finishing in the top 10 here tonight with Matthew Rodriguez in the third position. Adam Rose will be fourth and Connor Jermaine fifth, but Matthew Rodriguez, I don't know if this is going to be enough for him to get the points lead heading into next week's race, but still going to be a good points paying day for him as he was the only championship contender here this week in the truck series to finish with the top 10 down they come to the stripe Mackenzie Hopkins this will put a smile on her face checkered flag out and Mackenzie Hopkins wins the Tobuscus 200 version 2 here at Riki Raceway how about that talk about a Cinderella story Unbelievable. Let's see where some of our other championship contenders finished out this race. We know that Rodriguez, Matthew Rodriguez, finished third. Daniel Schwab finished in 14th. Anthony McCurry, 17th. 
Then you got to go quite a ways down to Jake Rogers in 25th. Sean Galligan, the pole sitter, he'll finish 32nd. And Joseph Bryant will finish in 35th. So, really, the only two drivers who had decent finishes here tonight were Matthew Rodriguez and Daniel Schwab. But Rodriguez, he's going to reap the benefits, I'm sure. He's going to have a lot of points to be able to contribute to his spot in the standings. And be interesting to see where he ends up being heading into next week's race. But we know where Mackenzie Hopkins is going to be. Victory Lane. Mackenzie Hopkins, 82nd, dead last in the standings. You heard me. Dead last in the standings. Goes to Victory Lane here tonight at Riki Raceway. Don't go away, folks. Mobile One Cup Series, Snickers Cup Series comes here as we continue on the first race of the chase here at Riki Raceway. How will it go down in the Mobile One and Snickers Cup Series? We know how it's gone down here at Riki Raceway in the Truck Series. Be interesting to see if Riki Raceway can continue to be up to its old tricks as Mackenzie Hopkins goes to Victory Lane here tonight. You've been watching the NSRA Offline Racing at its best. Subscribe out of darkness and redness and whiteness. Then.